Fine Feathered Friends, All About Birds, by Tish Robbie, read by Grandpa Tom. I'm the cat in the hat, here to say a few words about all of your fine feathered friends known as birds. There are millions of birds I will show some to you. Your mother will not mind at all if I do. Now the birds we will meet are alike in some things. They each have a beak and a tail and two wings. They are covered in feathers and stand on two legs. And when they have babies, they hatch out of eggs. Birds come in all colors, all shapes, and all sizes, and live in a world that is full of surprises. The world's biggest bird is the ostrich, you see. It can stand nine feet tall. Why, that's taller than me. There's a tale told about them I don't understand. Some say that these birds hide their heads in the sand. But they couldn't and wouldn't. It's simply not true. It's a thing that no ostrich I know of would do. The bee hummingbird is so tiny, so small. It's just two inches long. That's the smallest of all. And its wings beat so fast that they hum when it flies. And the eggs that it lays are just jelly bean size. A bird gets its name from the simplest things. What it does, how it looks, or the song that it sings. Like the flycatcher's name comes as no big surprise, because when it's hungry, it likes to catch flies. The chickadee's named for the sound of its song. It chickadee-dees in the trees all day long. And the beautiful blue jay you see flying by has feathers as bright and as blue as the sky. Well, the spoonbill who lives in a marsh or lagoon is named for its bill, which is shaped like a spoon. And the tailor birds far off in Asia, I've read, sew up their nests, but they never use thread. They shred up thin pieces of dead leaves instead. And meet the bald eagle. I'm happy to say he's the national bird for the whole USA. Though his name says he's hairless, he's really not bald. He's the symbol of freedom, whatever he's called. When you're looking for birds, you can listen and hear the sounds that they make that are new to your ear. Like the owls who go, hoo, and the herons who squawk. Or the dove's gentle coo, that's the way that they talk. Or a parakeet's trill, or a guinea hen's cluck. The boom of an ostrich, the quack of a duck, the cry of the loon or the caw of the crow, or the catbird who meows like some cats that I know. Some birds that you see love to glide through the sky, while the other birds stay on the ground and can't fly. Take the New Zealand kiwi, whose name rhymes with peewee. Both hiwi and shiwi will never take flight. And these shy little birds like to stay out of sight and search for their food in the dark of the night. Now birds have some habits we might think are strange, but these habits are things that they can't ever change. Like the emperor penguins who live in the snow, where there's nothing to build a warm nest with, and so, when a mom lays an egg, it goes up on dad's feet, and until it is hatched, he can't move and can't eat. He must stand very still through each cold, icy storm till the day finally comes and the baby is born. Then it's mom's turn to help to take over and keep an eye on the baby while dad gets some sleep. When a male whooping crane feels it's time for a romance, he hops up and down in a strange kind of dance. His wings go flap-flip, and his feet go flip-flop. He twirls and he swirls with a hip and a hop. And although you might think this dance isn't exciting, a female crane finds it extremely inviting. When birds want to go on a winter vacation, they all take a trip 
and they call it migration. Wild geese are quite good at this trick, as you see. They fly off in a flock in the shape of a V. But the bird up in front gets the wind in his face and must soon take a rest, so a friend takes his place. Then the lead goose falls back, has a rest, and starts gliding. On airwaves, his other goose friends are providing. Oh, look at the time. Why, the minutes just flew. We must get you home. I know just what to do. Come on, follow me. You will see what I mean. It's my fine feather all-weather flying machine. There's room for you both, so just hop right on in it. We'll wing right back home. You'll be there in a minute. Dear Dick and Sweet Sally, oh, how was your day? Did you have any fun? Did you learn? Did you play? Please tell me about it, but first a surprise. I've been to the pet store. Now quick, close your eyes. I bought you a bird. It's a resumatuz. It's a baby all covered in soft downy fuzz. I don't know much about birds. Do you know? Who does? The End